Are your pictures coming up blurry and out of focus and they're not as sharp as you like them to be? Well today I'm going to give you 6 free tips on how to take sharper pictures. Hi there, I'm Brendan Diver and today I'm going to give you 6 free tips on how to create sharper pictures. Now, if you keep watching this video to the very end, I'm going to give you an extra two bonus tips. If you would give this video a little like and a little share, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell notification icon, you'll be notified when I upload videos on a weekly basis. Tip number one, don't leave fingerprints behind or else this is going to catch you out. Now, I'm not talking about a crime scene here. What I'm basically talking about is a very, very common issue that a lot of photographers do when they're starting on the photography journey. The front of your camera here, nice and shiny at the front what a lot of people do is when they're changing the lens or they're taking the camera out of the camera bag they touch the top of the camera lens with their fingers they get all smudges they get fingerprints and basically what happens when they go to take a picture they can't focus the camera basically can't see because the lens is dirty so just imagine it's like you going out on a winter's morning starting your car up and that car windscreen is frozen it's the exact same thing so what we have to do is we have to make sure this camera lens is nice and clean now, this is really, really simple. And the way that you can do it is you can buy yourself one of these little air blowers. You can get them on eBay or you can get them on Amazon. And basically what I do before I take any pictures at the start of a shoot, grab my little air blower, clean the dust off the top of the lens. I never, ever, ever wipe the top of the lens with a cloth starting off. Because if you do get any dirt or grit, what it'll do, it'll scratch your lens. So, little tip for you, use a little air blower. They cost about maybe five euro on eBay or Amazon. A little quick blow like that. Second thing what I do then is I get myself a very fine microfiber cloth. You can get these in camera stores or you can get them in opticians. And what I basically do is I just blow my breath over the top of the camera lens and I give the lens a nice little polish here. And then what you should have is a camera lens free of any fingerprints or smudges and that is one really really helpful way to help you get better pictures tip number two use a tripod one of the most common issues that photographers have when they're starting off is having the pictures blurry and shaky and this is basically as a result from not keeping your camera nice and steady while you're taking the pictures so what i always use if i'm doing landscape photography or pictures in low light like say for example night photography i use a tripod it's a stand like this it comes in a range of different materials and manufacturers different brands has three different legs and it's got telescopic legs that you can actually adjust the height now what you'll actually do is you fix this camera to the top of your stand here and it'll give you a really really solid steady base and this will stop an awful lot of your pictures from being blurry shaky out of focus now you can get all different types as i said it's a really really cheap one Another option you can get if you just want something that's very, very quick, easy uh, to use, just basically you can use it on top of a wall or a, a car bonnet or a roof, is a little filler like this here. And you'll actually see it can give you a nice little base as well. Here's a little tip for you. If you don't have a tripod for, tape for your camera or you forget your tripod and you're out doing landscape photography, if you've got a bean bag, a small little bean bag with you, Put that beanbag on top of a wall, top of a car roof, rest your camera on top, and that will give you a really, really solid uh, base for taking pictures. So you actually won't need a tripod. The good thing about these little tripods is if you're intending to go down the road of doing vlogging or doing YouTube, you can fix your camera to the top of your camera like th stand like this, and you can basically use it for doing selfies or recording yourself there. So that's a really, really handy device as well there. So I'll be doing a video again at a later stage about different types of tripods. Tip number three. When you're taking pictures, use your camera's automatic built-in autofocus feature. I personally don't trust my own eyes for using the manual mode on the camera here. So I use the automatic feature. So when you're taking a picture, your camera will basically focus automatically for you. I'll actually put up a little photograph on the screen here just to show you where that feature is, how you can switch it on and off. Tip number four, focus points. Make sure when you're taking a picture that you're actually focusing on the subject that you're going to photograph. Should it be a flower, a person, an object, make sure you've got that focus point right over your subject. 
If you're not focusing on the subject itself, your, picture, your subject is gonna be out of focus. I'm actually gonna put up a little uh, sample on the screen here of what I mean by actually using focus points. Now, you'll actually see on this image here, the first picture that I've put up, the picture is nice and sharp and the background's out of focus. This is because I've actually put my focus points over the subject that I'm photographing. Picture number two, you'll actually see that the picture's out of focus and the background is in focus. This is because I haven't actually focused on the subject itself. I've actually focused on the background. So remember, when you're taking that picture, make sure you have your focus points actually on the subject itself. Again, at a later stage, I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth video about focus points on your camera. Tip number five. There's some situations where using a tripod just actually physically isn't practical to use. If your camera has stabilizer, make sure that you use this feature. Now, what is stabilization on a camera lens or body? Image stabilization is a feature on some lenses and camera bodies that avoids the blur of a shaky camera when hand holding it. By counteracting that shake, you can use a slower shutter speed than you normally would without getting a blurry photo. Not all cameras and lenses have this feature. Another way of looking at it is if you're driving your car on a bumpy road, full of potholes, really, really rough out in the country, your shock absorbers or suspension will basically counteract this so you have a nicer, smoother, comfortable ride. So make sure if you have that stabilization and you're doing handheld shots, make sure it's switched on. Make sure you switch off your stabilization if you're using a tripod. If you've got your camera on a tripod and it's nice and steady and rock solid, if you've got stabilization actually switched on, that feature will go looking for camera shake. And if there is no camera shake whatsoever on the image, it'll actually introduce it into the picture. This only applies if you're actually using a tripod. So, as promised at the very beginning, if you got as far as the end of this video, I have two extra bonus tips for you. Here's what I do when I'm taking landscape photography. When your camera's actually sitting nice and steady on that tripod, just by you actually pressing down the shutter on your camera, you can actually introduce camera shake into the image. I actually use a trigger. Now, these come in all different types. This is a little remote control and wireless. You pair it up with your camera, and instead of actually pressing the button on your camera to take that picture, you press this button here, sends a signal from this trigger to your camera, and that actually takes the picture for you. So it doesn't matter if you're moving about, moving your hand, using this trigger here, you're not actually touching the camera itself. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can actually go for a cable version, and it's called a cable release. So basically, it's the same idea. You've got the camera shutter button on the end of a cable. You plug this into the side of your camera. And when you've got your camera nice and steady, you can activate the shutter by this button here. Really, really useful, especially if you're taking low light images at nighttime, or say for example, landscape photography. Really, really recommend this. So here's your final tip for today. If you haven't got a cable release or wireless trigger for your camera, all cameras have got a secret option built into them nowadays, and it's a timer. Basically what this happens is, you can set your timer for two, five, or 10 seconds. So what happens if you set it for five seconds, you press the button, it'll go beep, 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 beep. It'll give you a little alarm to let you know that it's ready to take the picture. And after five seconds, two seconds, or 10 seconds, whatever way you set it, it'll actually take the picture for you. This is really, really useful if you're doing landscape photography. Another great way you can actually use this for is if you're actually gonna be doing selfies or you wanna take a picture of yourself for a business headshot, you can actually have your camera set up on a tripod facing towards you, press the button, it'll go beep, 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 and it'll give you five seconds to run around to the front of the camera, take the picture, and then you'll actually be able to take a picture of yourself without anybody with you. So, I hope you enjoyed the video for today. If you have any videos that you'd like to see in the future, please comment below and I'll create that video for you.